In this video, uh, I want to introduce uh, graph convolution, which is basically convolution uh, like you've seen for uh, images, uh, but for graphs or actually for molecules. And uh, this is based almost entirely on, um, on this excellent blog post here, which is a, a super introduction into, into graph convolution. I'll leave a link to this in the video description. Uh, so we're going to use uh, our dkit for this. So I'll start by copying uh, the first two cells here. And uh, I'll run those. I'll be back when they're finished. Okay, let's start by looking at a molecule. So we'll just make a simple one, uh, CNC, so uh, dimethylamine, and look at it. Okay, so basically, um, so this is a molecule, but in, in, in another uh, way, this is a graph, right? So you, you have nodes, uh, that's where the atoms are, and edges, right? That's the bonds. And so we'll, uh, that's the connection here to, to graphs. And the idea now is to how to sort of uh, get chemical information into this. Uh, so a very, uh, the usual way of getting a graph out of this um, is through an adjacency matrix. Like so. Uh, and so you can see here, this is a, um, basically a, a list of zeros and ones uh, where the ones indicate bonds. Uh, right, so there is uh, actually to to make this a little clearer. Let me uh, let me add numbers here because it's really the, the the numbering here that's important. Um, I'm gonna paste in some code. Uh, you can you can uh, pause the video and and then type it in. It's not very long. Uh, so I'm going to label my atoms. Right, so you can see here is atom zero, here is atom one, here is atom two, right? And so the, the ordering here, so this is atom zero, one, two, and also atom zero, one, two. And so you can see there is a bond here. The one indicates that there is a bond between zero and one, and of course also a bond between one and zero. And there's another bond here between one and two, and that's the same bond here between two and one. Uh, so that's a, so now we're sort of converted the molecule into a into a graph, and so that then the, so the molecule really only or the graph really only knows about connections, and so the convolution is is a way of getting sort of chemical information uh, into this. So that's what I want to describe next. Um, we're going to go through some matrix operations, and some of these uh, really only work. Uh, if A is a matrix and not an array. So let's just do this first. Okay. So, for example, in order to tell it that these atoms are different, uh, or which atoms are different, uh, we can, yeah, that's, that's going to be our first example of convolution. So we have two types of atoms. We have C and N. Uh, and so we're going to hot one hot encode this, right? So our carbons, um, there are two possibilities. The, the, we'll say the carbon is the first possibility and the nitrogen is the second uh, possibility. So that's a very simple one hot encoding. I've talked about that in a previous video. Uh, and so let's uh, now make a matrix uh, of, of, or an array of atom properties or, or atom types. I should say, right? So I have uh, C, my molecule is C and C, 
right? And so, right? So we now have uh, on the rows here. That's each atom. So atom one is of this type. Atom two is of this type, and atom three is the same type as atom one, right? That's what the one-hot encoding represents. So, uh, so the convolution is basically uh, the multiplication of these two. Um, and since these are matrices, I'll just use the, the at instead of the star. Okay, so when I multiply this together, what, what do I see? Uh, so let me just, uh, let me just uh, quickly write that down. So what you see here, right, is that this matrix basically tells us or tells the neural network eventually, right, that atom zero uh, is bound to one nitrogen, right, and and zero carbons. Atom one, right, is now bound to two carbons because it's it's in the it has a two in the carbon column and zero in the in the nitrogen column, right, and the last atom is the same. Has the same connectivity as the first atom in terms of atom types, right? So this is a this is so we've sort of Im, Im, Im embedded uh, some chemical information about the atom types uh, into the graph. Okay, so the the problem is that it it this um, this kind of matrix tells um, tells the neural network what's bonded to what, but it doesn't really say anything about what atom zero is. Uh, so in order to get that in there, uh, we, we're going to add the identity matrix. So I'm going to make the identity matrix here using NumPy. So you can see this is just the identity matrix, right? And so, if I make a new matrix now called a hat, I'm using the notation from the blog post. Right, now I get a matrix like this. And so if I multiply a hat, rather than a uh, by x. All right, so my modified adjacency matrix, um, then I get this. So we can now copy this. All right, to Talk about the interpretation, right? So, um, atom zero here in this row, right, is is bonded to one nitrogen, which is this, and zero carbons, and right because there's a one here, right? It also tells us that it it is a carbon. Right? So similar here, so atom one is bound to two carbons, right? And is itself a nitrogen because there is now a one here. Right? And so finally, uh, that's the same as this one here. Okay, so now we have some information about what the atom is and what it's bonded to. Now, as you can imagine, uh, for, for a larger systems where a lot of things are bonded to a lot of other things, we, we'll start uh, we'll start having some pretty big numbers in here, uh, and so that that can uh, represent a problem for many activation functions. So it's good to uh, it's good to normalize this uh, to to make sure that the the numbers in this matrix are relatively small. Um, and so the way to do that. is to define something called d hat, where we basically sum, um, sum the rows. 
in a hat. Like so. So we, let's see what that looks like. All right, so that's uh, basically just the, you know, the sum of this is two, the sum of this is three, the sum of this is that is two again. And we want to take this and, and put it into a, a diagonal matrix. So a matrix here. And we're going to use the diag function. Uh, to put it in diagonal form. What did I misspell here? That's hat. Right? So just, yeah, what was before a vector is now a diagonal matrix. Um, and then we can use this, um, the inverse of this, to, to normalize it. Right? So, so if I take the inverse of, of d hat, take it to the minus 1 power, and multiply, whoops, and multiply it by a hat times x. Uh, right, you can see that all the rows here will sum to 1. So, so this, this will be normalized. Actually, what they found is that it's, it's actually better um, to work with the uh, square root of this that works a little bit better. So let's define d hat inverse. All right, so normally that would be this. All right, but if you take the square root of this and then put it here, put it on either side of a hat. All right, you get something slightly different, uh, still relatively small numbers, um, but it works a little bit better. Okay, so we have sort of a convolution um, and the next thing is then to connect this uh, with some weights uh, so that the neural net can learn what cons what, how best to use the convolution, basically. Um, so we're going to need some weights. I'm going to use capital W for this. Uh, right, so as usual, uh, those will be random numbers. And so the size of this, right, is basically um, how many sort of features uh, we're using. And by features here, I mean, right, in this case, there's only two. It can either, either be a carbon or a nitrogen, right? So we have two features. Uh, and we uh, can then add, let's say, an arbitrary number of layers um, to of, of layers of weights uh, to basically uh, find the best combination of features right so let's just arbitrarily pick something like five uh, and subtract one so we have something between zero and one so uh, so this is number of descriptors of features Um, times the number of filters. Filters, that's what you would, uh, a term taken from the, the image convolution. Okay, uh, we need to make this a matrix. All right, and so this will look like this. Uh, I need to, let's see, 
I probably haven't imported random, so let's see. No, I have. Okay, that's okay. That's fine. All right, so it looks something like this. Um, let's make sure that we're always that you're getting the same numbers as I am. All right, so with this random seed, you should get should get this. And then uh, the, the, the final thing in the convolution then is, uh, so let's call this H, right? So this is just our H matrix. And we're now going to multiply that, the H matrix by the weight matrix Right. And then finally, what you do, just like in, in a normal um, convolution, is, is pass this through um, an activation function. Uh, and so the one that's uh, often used in graph convolution is the ReLU function. Right. So we'll just uh, quickly implement that here. That's easy. Right. It's just 0 um, if x is negative and x if x is positive. Right. So finally, we pass it through, set here. Right, and you have uh, zeros here where it's negative and otherwise the number again. Okay, and so that then is, you can then give that either to another convolutional layer or or to a dense uh, layer and then and then make a prediction. Uh, and so when so what's the what would be the point of passing it through another convolutional uh, layer? Right? You're basically just going through the, the, the same thing again. Uh, so for small molecules there isn't really a point, uh, but for larger molecules there is. So let me let me illustrate that. Let's make another molecule here. Um, let me go up and copy the code. here. Uh, and so I'm going to add a few more n's and z's so you can see the molecule here. Okay, so well, let's label it. There you go. Um, so let's let's look at the adjacency matrix for this again. Uh, so let me go up and uh, copy some code here again. Uh, what do I want? I want this. And this. Here I'm working on mole two, and now I have to make changes here to reflect a little more complicated molecule. Um, and let me just uh, not add um, add the, the unit matrix and things like that, just just to illustrate what's going on. So let's. Uh, let's just call this my convolution here, All right? I can then print h1, and then uh, I can pass it to another convolutional uh, layer, right? That would basically correspond to uh, using h1 here instead instead of x, uh, and then print h2. Right? So what you see here in the first um, convolution, in the first pass, this is basically what, what we expect. Right? So uh, this atom is, is only bonded to one. This atom here is bonded to two things. This atom here is bonded to two things, two things, and one. Right? So that this atom is bonded to one thing, namely this. This is bonded to two things, namely these two, and so forth. 
right? But if I actually then make another pass here, right, I can now see that, that this center atom here, right, is bonded to something that's bonded to something else, right? You see, because this gets a four, right? This atom here gets a three, right? Because it's bonded to a lot of things in this direction, but only one thing in this direction, right? And, and so forth. So by going through several convolutional layers, uh, you can get some, some wider, so, some, some information about the bonding further and further away from the atom. Uh, so that can also be very, uh, very valuable. The final thing uh, I want to show is that it just a, another example of, of a feature uh, that you could put in. So if I go up here 